Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to tip number six. Today's Thursday. So Thursdays are the days I talk about um, financial mindset and in my series of attempting abundance always. And today is tip number six on financial mindset. Yeah. So every week I've been giving tips, you know, and under financial mindset, we talk about how to manage money, uh, how to make money, uh, what a definition of wealth, which is a wealth ratio must be more than one. Uh, you know, I we talked about different different things. You know, about money management. And last week we talked about uh, you, that you shouldn't resent money because when you resent rich people or you resent money or resent uh, expensive cars or expensive houses, it won't come to you. And and today is a very interesting topic and an interesting tip that I want to share with you today. Uh, today's tip is about um, money will only come to you if you know how to spend the money. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, you know, and, and I, like I said, I, I come from an estate. I, my parents were a bit so money was not enough. So we always don't know, uh, even the little bit that you get, you must be very careful how you spend. So as I was growing up in Malab, then I gave tuition, I made some money. And I, again, I was very careful how I spent. I worked as a waiter, I made some money. How do I spend? Um, I did all kinds of things. I used to sell vegetables and all that was planted in, you know, at the back of my house in the estate of fruits like mangoes, papayas, which I'll take you to the market and sell. Or my sisters will do this uh, ice cream batang, we call it. Or my, my grandmother will make uh, mades and curry puffs and all, which I'll take it and sell. So all the while I was trying to make money, make money, make money. But I'm very careful about spending because I want to uh, make sure that, you know, um, whatever I make, I'm able to spend a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, so if you, if you, if you at that point in time, if I had a lot of money, I would not know what to do with it. I wouldn't know how to spend because I'm not used to it. One of the tips that I want to tell you today is that I learned over the period in time that money um, doesn't come to you if you don't know how to spend. It's like I, I give you the example of always we say about, you know, like you're giving a garland of flowers to a monkey because the monkey won't know what to do. And similarly, you know, uh, when, when we as human beings, the universe is connected to, uh, to us. God is connected to us. And whatever we ask, you'll get, you know, um, uh, I think all religion, be it, be it in the Muslims or the Hindus or the Christians or the Buddhists or any religion, or even those who don't believe, who believe, who don't believe in religion, will say, if you ask, you'll be given. God will always give you whatever you ask. Then why is it that if I ask, I don't get money? One of the reasons is because you don't know how to spend money, and you might be saying, "No, Mr. Kathy, I know what to spend. I I know if I get money, I'll buy a car, I'll buy a house, and then I know I'll pay for this and pay for then." Or if I have money, I will know what to do. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you an exercise today to do. And you will be stunned that after a while, you don't know what to do with money. And that is one of the reasons why money won't come to you. Why? Because you are looking at money only to look at paying for your monthly expenses, pay for this, pay for that. That's about it. You do not know how to have uh, money and enjoy life. Um, I'm not saying that you know you should have a lot of money where you waste money. That's not what I'm saying. But it's about having money to be able to um, enjoy the fruits of your of your uh, labor by really knowing how to spend. Uh, I'm not talking about having 14 cars. I'm not talking about having five houses. I'm not talking about having fix, fixed deposits, one of another loan. I'm just talking about having money and being able to do things. For example, um, have you ever thought about if you have money, pay off your the loans? I mean, first pay off your own housing loans and car loan, whatever. But what if you can take the money and pay for the loans that was taken by your brothers or sisters, or um, you know, take that or set up uh, set up a trust fund in your parents' name? So a lot of these things we don't think because we feel that I also don't have money. How am I going to do all that? And that is the problem because I realized that money started to come into my life when I started to look at a lot of things I want to do. You know about how you know what if you can get all your family to go for a holiday trip? You pay for everything. What if you take your family to go for a, you know, uh, you know, somewhere and you book a five-star hotel and let them come and stay there? Uh, what about taking your parents? I was just talking to my wife just now about, you know, um, you know, taking your parents for a luxurious holiday, and we pay for everything. So, but but a lot of us don't think like that because we always feel there's not enough money. So, I know some of you have been watching all my videos and have been following all this. Well, I I, I talk about something called a doubling money exercise, which is exactly what I'm going to share with you today. It's a tip that I learned long time ago, and it's actually um, explained by Abraham Hicks in many of our videos. Yeah, uh, you know they are law of attraction gurus, you know, and they talk about it. And what they say is that if you do a simple exercise, get a notebook, you know, get a get a notebook, okay, and uh, write a date, okay.
okay, starting today. So today is the 10th of February, right? Today, 10th of February. And start today and think about how would you spend money when money comes to you. So how do you do this? Very simple. Start from small. So today is the 10th of February. You put there 100 ringgit. What will you do with 100 ringgit today? Today, if you get 100 ringgit, what do you will do with it? Uh, but you don't say, I want to pay for my telephone bill. I don't, I don't. The one is normal, which is all extra 100. What do you do? What will you do? Uh, I think I'm going to go and walk, uh, eat in a Japanese restaurant. You know, I, I always wanted to eat, but very expensive. Or I want to take my whole family go to McDonald's and say, eat whatever you want to eat. You know, or I want to take my whole family to go to a nice, um, you know, five five star Indian restaurant and you know spend 100 ringgit eating really good Indian food as compared to going to a, a mama restaurant or a, or a normal, uh, you know, uh, banana leaf restaurant. So something like that, right? So 100 ringgit. Okay. So today is 100 ringgit. How do you spend now? This is an exercise you've got to do every day. Huh? So today, that's it, finish. Now, next, tomorrow, put the 11th of February and put the 200. 100 become 200. Now, what would you do 200? Oh, I think 200, I'm going to buy a handbag for my wife. Okay. But, but have this idea. Don't just write down and say handbag, but Google. Go Google Internet. Google how much does a handbag cost? What is the handbag that your wife likes? And decide. Now, let's say you Google and you find the handbag is 300 ringgit, but you only have 200 ringgit, right? Okay. So that 200 is used for something. You know why? On the 13th of, on the, on the 12th of February, the 200 become 400. And then you buy a handbag for your wife because it's about 300 something. And the balance of the money, decide what you want to do with it. Now, what I'm trying to tell you to do is this is called a doubling money exercise whereby every day you need to double it, 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 and spend it. So you must write in the book how you're going to spend it in detail. Don't say, I will buy a laptop for my, my, my daughter. How much is the laptop? What brand are you going to buy? Oh, I think I'm going to buy an iPhone for my wife. How much is the iPhone? What, you know, cost? So don't just make it, oh, I will buy jewelry for my wife. What jewelry? Earring? Uh, uh, what? Uh, ring? Chain? What? Bracelet? What? But, you see, when you start searching, uh, you see, now, now, if I would ask you, hey, do you know what's the price of jewelry? Uh? I, uh, I don't even have money where I got look, time to look at jewelry. Uh, do you know uh, how much is a Volvo? I, uh, can't even afford a BMW, what do you call it? Can't even afford a proton when I buy a Volvo. See, the problem is, you see, we have already stopped from looking everywhere because we don't have enough. This is the reason why if you look at salespeople, be it insurance, be it MLM people, be it, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, unit trust or mutual fund people or any sales, real estate, you would have noticed uh, many of these people, when they, are, when they are taught in terms of goal setting, they have a Facebook account. Uh, sorry, they've got a vision board. And in vision board, they will always talk about, I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to buy a Mercedes. I'm going to buy. And you will sometimes you will say, Allah, dreaming. But you see, many of them actually then get to buy those cars, live that kind of life, have that kind of houses. But it's because they already started to think about spending the money. Now, when you start thinking about spending the money, money will come. Money will or totally will come. And, and of course, along the way, you can, of course, settle up your loans be debt free, you know, uh, pay for your family debts, you know, um, you set up a scholarship fund for to, to sponsor children. You can do all this. But what I want to tell you is that this exercise, many people, when I ask them to do it in my classroom, during classroom exercise, huh, uh, after 10 days, huh, when there's already about 100, 200,000, huh, people don't know what to do. Already. On the 15th day, because it doubles every day, right? On the 15th day, there'll be 1.5 million. And people are stunned, don't know what to do 1.5 million and say, no, no, Mr. Kathy, very difficult. And that's the reason why you cannot be rich. You cannot be rich because mentally you are blocking yourself. Now, this is just, just a game. It's like playing Monopoly. You know, when you, I don't know whether you have played Monopoly before. If you play Monopoly, you know, you always think I must buy the four railway stations or I want to buy the houses and then build a hotel and then charge for rental. Every week. See how you are thinking, you know, about building this, building this, building this, building this, because that is how Monopoly works. And that's how you must think. I want to be able to buy this and buy that. And for that, you must Google as well. Even better, if you either use a laptop or use your notebook, but even better if you were to put there, okay, so on the 15th day, you got 1.5 million. You, you want to buy a house. Go and take Google and find out some pictures of houses and say, where you want to buy? You want to buy in uh, Tropicana, okay. How much is a house in Tropicana? Now, let's say the house in Tropicana is 2.8 million. You call you 1.5 million. It's okay. You buy the next day, 1.5 million becomes 3 million. Then you buy the house. Today, 1.5 million, what are you going to do? I think I'm going to buy an apartment you know, worth 1 million and then give it to one of my sons. See how your mind works or not. Now, now uh, 3 million, you already bought a bungalow house already. Now, the next day, you have 6 million. What will you do? Oh, I got four children. I want to buy a condominium for each of the children. See, when you start thinking like that about 
buying this and buying that. Buying, even though it's just imagining and visualization, let me tell you something. There is a phrase that says, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it, meaning think about it first. Fake it first as if you have it. Be happy, be excited. It will come through in your life because fake it till you make it. So that is visualization. That is also a vision board. That is what it's all about. So you need to know that universe will give you whatever you want, but you need to think. In fact, on the 30th, now what happens is you do it all the way to the 30th day, then stop. Then next month on the 11th of um, uh, 12, because we have already 28 days, right? So on the 12th or 13th, which is 30 days over, right? Then you start on 12, then you start 100 again and do again one. So after 30 days, start the same exercise again. Is that clear? Or what you can do, you can start now, go until the end of this month. Then on the 1st of March, start with 100 ringgit. And then start thinking again, what I want to do, what I want to do, what I want to do, what I want to do. I will tell you this today, my friends. I have one lady that I know who um, at, at 1.5 million, 1.2 million, she actually wanted to buy a condominium, which was worth about 1.3 million. So she took pictures of it. She Googled it. She put it in a book. So she had a scrapbook. So she writes it down. So she put a picture. Uh, a couple of weeks later, she entered a lucky draw. And the first prize was that same particular condo. And she won first prize and she got the bundle and the particular particular condo. And I've got lots of people who have done this exercise and they've got a car, they've got a house, money just comes. Because you know what to do with the money and God gives you and you know what to do. The problem is God won't give you when you don't know what to do. It's just a fun exercise. Fun. As you get more and more money, think about charity, setting up a mosque. You know, at the end of the 30-day period, eh, you would have billions of dollars. I even have people who say, when I have billions of dollars, Mr. Kathy, I think I'm going to donate 1 billion to the country eh, so that they have more test kit, COVID kits are free. You know, I want to donate, you know, one billion and to do this. There's a, I, I want to set up, you know, not just, I'm a Hindu, right? Not just set a temple. I want to get a big plot of land and, you know, get a mosque there, get a church there, got a, get a gudwara there and get a temple there, you know, so that people can all live harmoniously. It's just a dream, but that is how you start thinking. Can you imagine one day you go to your uh, mom and dad's place and, you know, and you tell them, uh, mom, dad, I paid for your, uh, you know, your uh, loans already, assuming they still have loans. Or you say, listen, you know, I've, I've got, uh, I bought a ticket for a world tour. Let's go for world tour. All first class. We travel Singapore Airlines, the most expensive airlines. Let's travel. All paid for. That is the kind of feeling you must have. You know, can you imagine you've got three brothers or three younger sisters. You can pay for the education in full. Can you imagine you've got brothers and sisters who've got car loan, housing loan, and you go and you can, you can pay off their loan and all. See, once you start thinking that way, because this is money that, you know, that you are writing as a game. But when you start thinking, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go, the universe is watching you. God is watching you and see how you spend your money. And by way you spend the money, God will say, oh, I like this person. Let me give him money and money will come. That is called Durian Runto. So money will only come if you know how to spend. So tip number six today is do this exercise, which is called doubling money exercise. Start from today, 100, 200, 200 and go on and on and on. Along the way, maybe after the 10th day or 15th day, then maybe you start paying off your loans as well. In the beginning, don't immediately, I want to pay this loan, I want to pay the loan. Hello, you won't enjoy the game. In the first 10 days, just use it to buy things that you always wanted to buy. Maybe after the 10th day, 15th day, maybe part of it you can put for saving, part of it you can buy, um, pay off your loan, part of it you know you can invest, all that you can do. But initially, as you start doing it, with the, as the money, because one point in time, you go 1.5 million. You just go to the bank and say, my car loan settled. You know, my housing loan settled. You can do that one. Credit card settled. Do you understand? So have fun with the game. Your life will change for sure. So all the best with you. Um, take care of yourself. Um, and, and understand this is a game that's going to excite a lot of you. And I know it's also going to increase your prosperity energy. And when your prosperity energy goes, the vibration goes, money will come more and more to you. You'll be surprised how fast money comes to you. So thank you very much for joining me today, my friends. Take care. Bye-bye.